Eben Gate, Eb on Gate, Ebon Gate. However you say it, it's been a phenomenal celebration this year at Natum. Here on the channel, we've gone fishing, completed a guidebook quest, went shopping, reviewed the economy, various features, and things we missed. In our final Ebon Gate video of 2023, we're going to check out the Simucoin games. You can play these all the way through the end of the festival on October 31st at 11.59 p.m. Eastern, but you will need a Simucoin entry. The gated and cursed entries could leave the store a little early, usually right before the last day of the event. You should take time to buy what you can now and have some fun before you have to wait another year to access this festival. There's four Simucoin games we're talking about today, including Trick or Treat, Herb Hunt, Arena of the Abyss, and Sonriva, aka the Necropolis. So let's dive in. The Gemstone 4 Trick or Treat game has been around since 2020 and has received a few improvements over the years. Before you participate, head over to In the Bag and get a Trick or Treat bag for 5 shards. You don't have to use this item, but it will help you with inventory management. Combat is involved in the neighborhood, so do yourself a favor and get some defensive spells. You can bring friends along too. With your bag on your belt, head over to Endeltime Estates neighborhood, get out your key, and go entry. While in the neighborhood, you'll receive 10 treats from knocking on doors in the form of soul shards or candy. At minimum, you'll receive two pieces of candy and the rest shards. I usually receive roughly 280-ish per key. Put any wrapped candy you receive in your bag for now. Often you'll get pulled inside the door by a creature and will need to kill it before you can continue knocking on doors. Only the one who knocks will get pulled in, but you can always go out so your party members can help you. The creature will follow. Don't forget to loot the room as sometimes they leave behind useful jewelry or gems. Also, don't worry, being tricked does not count as a treat. You always get 10 rewards per key used. You will earn experience by killing creatures and also completing the activity. So if you see yourself saturated, consider using a Boost Absorb, Boost Long, or a Brooch of Luminous. I know some players use the TOT script for this area. It uses Big Shot for combat. I prefer to play this activity with macros instead. If you're on Lich, use something like semicolon alias add KD equals knock on first door backslash R, knock on second door backslash R, then use KD to knock on doors. Non-Lich users can use a similar type of macro command setup with the official client. If you need a refresher on creating macros, there is a video available. You can even use the search feature on the channel to find a certain topic. Trick or treat candy is a process all in itself. As mentioned in the last video, some players will buy the unwrapped candy outright from you, which makes it easier to manage. For those who do want the candy, you can twist it to obtain various types of desserts. These are very special depending on which type and tier you have. They can produce different Simucoin store items. Analyze the unwrapped candy to see commands, hug to see all rewards, and nudge to redeem a qualifying piece. The one everyone covets is the Group 3 Experience category. If you collect 81 chocolates, you can redeem a Shimmering Blue Experience Modifier Orb. Some other options are the green category that give you 30-day encumbrance potions or permanent locker expansions, dried fruit that gives various quest entries, and candy stick reward items for different types of guilds. You can always wave the candy to turn it into edible food, but you'll forfeit the reward associated with that tier. In case you're wondering, yes, waving them makes it eligible to enter a basket so you may consider sacrificing a few rewards for the sake of expanding your collection. We're going to need some bigger basket unlock certificates. Herb Hunt is a no-combat activity where you try to locate signs of a toad shade within 90 seconds. 
grab a key and head to the garden shack. Head into the entry just like with Trick or Treat. If you have perception training, try Sense to find the right room and use Forage if you train Survival instead. You are looking for similar messaging to this. Find several withered toad shade leaves in the area. If you see this message or something similar, use Search to pull out the toad shade and you'll earn a whopping 400 soul shards. If you run out of time or purposefully search early, you'll get a Simucoin store item and earn shards, usually about 275 per key. This is considerably faster than Trick or Treat to acquire shards, and you'll still get some experience, but you will get a little more bang for your buck doing Trick or Treat due to the candy. More effort yields a higher reward. As mentioned in a previous video, this activity is where you can find the rare Mandrake Pet Whistle. We know at least three have gone out this year. Those are listed off the shelf as 500,000 shards, a theoretical 400 million silver value for anyone who wants to try their luck in finding a whistle. I encourage a script for this activity, and the one you're looking for is called Herb Hunt. That covers the two games you use gated entry keys for. Now let's look at the cursed entries, or the enruined stone cubes. These are one-tenth of the price of a key, and the arena will yield one-tenth of the average shard reward compared to one entry of a key game. The Arena of the Abyss is a more tame version of the Duskrune Arena. The entrance is located in the Arena of the Abyss influx. You can use the pay verb with your cube in hand to begin a map. Beg spirits will speed up the starting announcements. You have five undead opponents you must vanquish. There is no time limit, however the longer you stay in the area, the more likely a random lightning bolt will hit you. Those are painful and will often kill you. As an empath, Wither has worked well so far this year and some creatures may even respond better to Bone Shatter. You only get rewards if you can defeat all five, so avoid dying or surrendering unless you have no other options. There is a script some players use for this activity called Abyss. When you finish, you'll receive shards and an item. The items can vary, such as a couple coins, a fusion token, a green experience orb, breakable items, and a necrotic ring. Speaking of the necrotic ring, this is the real reason you want to run the arena on repeat. If you eliminate all five creatures in the arena, you'll have five charges added to your necrotic ring. This ring has a few different abilities. At its base form while active, if it has charges, there's a chance an experience granting monster you kill will respawn as an undead version on death. This can be quite handy when it comes to doing bandit bounty tasks. Extra bandit spawning make group hunts even faster if everyone has active rings. If you don't have a ring of your own, search the player shops. As I write this script, we have a few being offered in the player shops for between 400 and 500,000 silver. They tend to hover around the 800,000 to 1 million range during the off-season. There are some additional abilities that can be obtained through the NPC standing outside the arena entrance. These include special unlocks, which grant a chance for the respawn creature to be a boss version with extra treasure or grant you a stat boost for 30 seconds when you kill the undead that the ring spawned. You can add one charge to the ring by giving it to the NPC, who will take 25 shards from you per charge. You can also change the war location too. Be sure to interact with the NPC to see all the options. It's a personal preference how far you charge or unlock your ring. This is a neat item for sure. On to our fourth activity, Sonriva, aka the Necropolis. This is a dungeon crawl, escape room, puzzle and combat experience created by the zombie himself. You are absolutely encouraged to bring friends with you and explore it together. There's been a lot of great dialogue exchanged between Worm and players on the vision for this activity and plans for the future. 
I would highly encourage you to check out the Sanriva Wiki article, the Save Posts and Announcements, the Town Crier articles, and the Sanriva thread that's currently active in the GS Discord forum area. The rewards could potentially get reworked, and there's a chance this year will be the last year to use cubes to gain access. There's a lot still up in the air, so we really won't know how things are going to fall until next year. What you should do is use a few cube entries to explore Sanriva. As the access price could change, do not miss an opportunity this year to run it a few times and become more familiar with the overall event. Worm has put over 400 hours into building this thing so far. There's still secrets that no one has uncovered yet. Some additional reminders, this is an escape room puzzle and combat driven activity. It's meant to be challenging. A lot some time, try different stuff, bring friends, interact with the world, and expect to die. Repeat runs will become much faster as you learn about how everything works. There are secrets to discover, and you'll know when you do. To begin your journey, just head over to Sanriva Mausoleum, get out your cube, and pay. Bonus content time! I was pleasantly shocked to wake up and find a mini Delirium Manor experience is now open until the end of Ebon Gate on October 31st at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. A Discord post went out in the event announcements thread highlighting all the details. You'll find the toy chest in Lich Room 31582. Going into the chest puts you in room 25360. On the counter, you'll have entries for sale granting access to the game. One entry is 100,000 silver, and they come in 1, 10, and 50 count versions. If you have a surplus of general tickets, check the cart right next to the counter. Buy a potato if you missed that gift box or lost it somehow. Nom nom. The fossil charm is available for only 15,000 general tickets. This picks up silver coins for you off the ground, and you can point them at treasure boxes to collect coins without round time. On the side lawn, you'll find a costume bin with items to dress up your potato. Yes, here in Gemstone we do put plush brown teddy bear costumes on our potato companions. In the gift shop front room, you'll have wind-up keys should you own a doll that is compatible with that item. Do not buy if you don't have the required doll item. In the sack, will be Arcadi statues for a compatible Arcadi box. Moving it to the back room showcases a lot of miscellaneous items. If you remember my Ebon Gate shopping video, but you'll only see the unlocks for stuffables and beer critters, not the base item itself. This room will let you buy those stuffables, and you still have time to get any applicable unlocks if needed. The bookcase will have old Caligos customs and spell preps. Inside the bowl, you will see heart-shaped certificates for your Necropolis Black Aura Hearts, a four-ringed metal pendant from Duskrune, a Golvern segment for your Moonshard pendant, and light deep notes in various denominations. Heading into the South Storage Room, we continue to see more toys, doll parts, and apparel. In the North Storage Room, you'll see adornments and accessories. Make sure to read the notice sharing that you're unable to remove pieces, only replace them. We're gonna run through the mini dollhouse rooms so you can see the different items available. These are all doll pieces. The mudroom has shields, sheets, and rats. At the parlor, the mannequins have hair, the jewelry box has accessories, and the hat box has, well, hats. The armory will have doll armor. The kitchen offers eyes, ears, and noses. For those who want to play in the backyard, you'll find clothes, socks, stockings, and more armor. I see you some forest green brig. The corridor has pins and miscellaneous jewelry. The bedroom will provide props and more clothing. The vault has rings, bracelets, and anklets. Up in the attic, two toy chests have more dolls and props. Alright, back to the main grounds. 
On the side lawn, you'll see the common treasure pile for 30 general tickets that holds things like pirate gear, key blanks, and kites. The back lawn will have the uncommon treasure pile for 300 general tickets each, and that will have rainbow wear, natum-themed figurines, and metallic gowns. The back porch has a doll park collector. There is a similar NPC collector inside the minigame, and as far as I can tell, they both do the same thing. The purpose of this DM event is to build a wax doll and dress it up. But if that's not your thing, and you don't want to take time to sell the items to other players, you can turn in pieces for more tickets. The front porch is where the entrance to the DM game is, and you'll need an invitational pass to get inside the manor. Once again, those are on sale by the entrance to this area in room 25360, covered previously in this video. Before you head inside the manor, remember there are no jackpot prizes in this special run of the event. It's also highly advised to spend all of your general tickets, as there's no guarantee anything like this will be happening again anytime soon. You could be sitting on those tickets for some time. The purchase prices for various items in this event have been updated to be more consistent with other events. I'm also getting about 135 to 140 general tickets per entry, so that's somewhere between 700 and 800 silver per general ticket. For those interested in what it looks like, after you head in, you just explore the mansion and search in various rooms. I was quick to notice at least two rooms have multiple interactable objects with food items that go into baskets. Now I'm wanting tier 7 and 8 baskets, huzzah! On your ninth search, you will get a warning saying you'll be plucked from the dollhouse with one more attempt. Once your 10 searches are up, you land on the back porch of the manor and can go again by heading back to the front. Woohoo! This year's festivities have been dynamite. The event closes this Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. The gift box and event box are all gone, and the entries will probably stop on Monday sometime, so buy what you can now. Play the games, explore San Riva, especially to say thanks to the zombie, do your last minute shopping, complete the guidebook quest for next year, maybe invite a friend to go fishing with you, Curify all the things. The obelisk wants your shards. There's also this surprise delirium manor experience and shopping addition. So if you have general tickets, spend them now. Do not hold on to your general tickets. If you're getting more, spend them all. This may be your only shot to get a potato and an outfit to go along with it. You've got three days, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and that's it. If it's still October 2023, you have time. This YouTube channel has climbed to 198 subscribers, almost doubling the total audience within four months. I'll post the 200 milestone in the community tab when it happens, so don't forget that area of the channel from time to time. You may see interesting things in that area in the future. I'm so grateful for everyone's support in helping share the gemstone experience with the world by watching, subscribing, rating videos with likes, dislikes, commenting on various content pieces, and sharing the channel or video links with friends. You all rock. Thank you so much. It's almost November. Can you believe it? Oof. Between now and the end of the year, I want to put some time into organizing content ideas and finish preparing for 2024. I have a small backlog with a few tease topics that have footage already recorded. I want to finish editing those and publish before moving strictly into new content. Some of my coding projects may see some updates too, and there's a few surprises planned, so check back in every so often when you can. In an effort to improve overall quality, I'm using a wider variety of editing software now too. This adds to production time, but the finished result is always worth it. Thank you for your patience as I work to put everything together, and I sincerely thank you for watching my content. I am grateful for my Patreon family, who have been very supportive in my ever-evolving artistic process. The game, Gemstone Community, this channel, and its audience mean the world to me. 
I hope my videos help you on your journeys in Alenthia. Please subscribe if you have not already. Let's launch the channel into the 200 bracket and beyond. Much love, take care, and see you all very soon.